Hey everyone, Steve the Average Gamer. We're back playing more of the Star Realms campaign, and in the last episode, we actually completed Chapter 8, and we're not going to resume that, for the Empire. We're going to head into Chapter 9, Beyond the Nebula, but before we do that, we're going to start using a new deck in the next two chapters. Chapter 9 and Chapter 10, we're going to be playing with the Colony Wars deck, so we're going to zip through those real quick. First off, we have the BattleBot, a machine cult ship. There's three of them in the deck. They cost one. I personally do not like this card because it's a two attack and you may scrap a card in your hand. Usually I don't like scrapping cards in my hand. If you've seen my earlier episodes, I like to scrap the cards out of my discard pile. It does give you that two extra attack, though, on the ally ability. Some of you may like to have that and scrap a Viper out or a Scout out. I want to get the most bang for my buck out of those cards before I get rid of them. The Solar Skiff, Trade Federation, cost one card. There's three of them in the deck. I This one I really enjoy, mainly because it gives you the two trade every time it comes out and gives you the ability to draw a card when another Trade Federation card is in play. The Star Barge of the Star Empire, very similar to the BattleBot and the Solar Skiff. There's three of them. In the Colony Wars deck itself gives you two trade the ally ability I like this one quite a bit to attack and target opponent discards a card if you somehow manage to get all three of these in your deck and they come out at the same time you get six trade six attack and your opponent is pretty much hosed for their next turn the swarmer the blob ship also three of them in the deck three attack you may scrap a card in the trade row they look like fish now, I'm just now realizing this, getting a good look at them. They look like fish, and you get two extra attack. If you get a couple of these out together, that's ten attack and scrapping a couple cards out of the trade row. The Lancer, moving up to our cost two cards, also three of them in the deck. I also enjoy this one. You can tell I have an affinity for the Star Empire and the Trade Federation cards. It does look a little bit like an X-Wing out of Star Wars. I'm not going to deny that, but... Gives you four attack for a cost two card and that fine print. If your opponent controls a base, gain an additional two attack. So you have as much as six attack with this guy alone. And that means you can take down a capital world, a brain world, pretty much all of the eight cost bases with this card alone. And of course, if there's another Star Empire card in play, opponent discards a card. The Blob cost 2 is the Predator, it's a Blob ship, gives you 4 attack for a cost 2 card, and the ally ability lets you draw up another card. The Repair Bot, this one I do prefer over the Battle Bot that we let off this explanation with, 2 trade and you may scrap a card only in your discard pile. You cannot scrap any of your cards out of your hand with this. And also has the scrapping ability of if you decide to scrap that card, you get to attack as well. The Stellar Reef, one of the blob bases that we have in Colony Wars, costs you two to pick up. Gives you one trade every turn. It is a bypassable defense three, but you can also get three attack out of it if you decide to scrap it. The Storage Silo, there's only two of them in the Colony Wars deck. Gives you two authority every turn. And if you have another Trade Federation base or unit in play, maybe another Storage Silo, you get two trade as well. So if you have both of the Storage Silos, you're getting four trade and four authority every turn before you lay down any cards out of your hand. The Trade Hauler, one of the Federation ships. Again, I like this one because it gives you a lot of trade. It gives you three trade on a two trade on a two cost card and that extra three authority if you have more than one Trade Federation card out together. The Warning Beacon, this is the first of a new mechanic that we actually get to see in Colony Wars. I'm going to read off the description for the card here. When you acquire this card, if you've played a Machine Cult card this turn, you may put this card directly into your hand. Now the fun part about this means, let's say I play a Repair Bot. I scrap a card out of my discard pile, I can buy the Warning Beacon and immediately play it on this turn. And this is not the only card in Colony Wars in which we actually have that ability. 
moving on to the cost three cards now the cargo pod i actually like this one quite a bit three trade ally ability gives it three attack and you can scrap it for an additional three attack or just a regular three attack if you don't have any blob units but this one actually if you get a couple of these in your deck you can do a lot of work with them in a very short amount of time the convoy bot of the machine cult again three cost four attack gives you an extra two if you have the ally ability and its normal ability you may scrap a card in your hand or discard pile so the convoy bot does usually get picked up by me if i have if i'm going heavy with the machine cult and i can stack up six really quick attack with that one card if i've got a base or another card in play the falcon gives you plus two attack and lets you draw up a card its scrap ability as the target opponent discard a card the orbital platform as we go through chapters 9 and 10 we're going to be seeing i think quite a bit of this card being used when i'm playing colony wars against the ai this is usually one of the first bases it goes for because you can discard a card out of your hand you don't want and draw a new card in its place example discarding a viper and end up drawing a star empire card like the falcon or the lancer gives you some extra attack and gives you that plus three for its ally ability note this is a four defense bypassable base and if i'm playing it that means the ai is probably going to ignore it the patrol cutter a trade federation ship two trade and three attack for a cost three card and its ally ability gives you an extra four authority the Ravager, this card is quite powerful, and I usually gravitate toward if it's available. I'll bypass other three cost cards, maybe even some four cost cards, to get this guy. Six attack, and you may scrap up to two cards currently in the trade row. It doesn't have an ally ability, but it provides the ally ability for other cards. So this is one I think is a real good one to have in your deck, mainly because by itself it can take out some of those heavier bases on its own the bioformer moving into the cost four cards now three attack every turn scrap it it'll give you three trades so you're not getting a full return on investment from your bioformer this is a cost four bypassable base the trade federation base the central station this is one i also go for heavily in the game and i recommend you do as well costs you four to pick up it gives you two trade every turn but the fine print if you have three or more bases in play, including this one, gain four authority and draw a card. Note there's two in the deck, so if you end up getting both of these guys and uh, maybe one of the other bases that I'm going to be showing you here in just a moment, you can end up pulling in some good trade and some good authority at the beginning of the turn. The command center of the Star Empire, another card I really like. This is an outpost of four, means you have to go through it before you can attack your opponent directly. Gives you two trade, and whenever you play a Star Empire ship, you get two attack. Now be careful when you're doing a play all, and you have this card and some Star Empire in your hand. You need to play this one first, then play your Star Empire ships to get this two attack bonus from each of those vessels. The Frontier Ferry of the Trade Federation gives you three trade and four authority every turn and you can of course scrap it to take out the target base star empire also has a ship that'll cost you four trade the gunship five attack and target opponent discards a card there's no ally ability but you can scrap this card to get that four trade back when let's say you need to go for a seven or eight card and you're just a little bit shy the, machine, the mining mech of the Machine Cult. This is the second uh, Machine Cult card that actually offers trade. One gives you three trade, lets you scrap a card in the hand or discard pile, and gives you that three attack if you have more Machine Cult cards in play. The Oracle. This one, I like it as a base, but not for its ability. It does have that five defense for an outpost and has you scrap a card in your hand. I talked about that earlier why i'm not a big fan of the whole scrapping a card in your hand motif gives you three attack if you have more machine cult cards in play the aging battleship 
This is, uh, let's see, this was, yeah, the first five cost card we have. There's only one in the deck. Five attack, ally ability lets you draw another card, and let's say you're kind of on the ropes. You think you have enough to take out your opponent, or you have a few cards left in your deck, and you know you're expecting some good Trade Federation cards to bulk up your authority. You can scrap this for two more attack and to draw two more cards. So if you're going heavy with Star Empire, you can actually draw, you can get seven attack and draw three from this one card. Not a bad card to pick up. Unfortunately, I usually see this one come out on the trade row very early in the game, and I don't get a chance to get it. The Colony Seed Ship. This one really varies in when it shows up for me when I'm playing, but it gives you three trade, three attack, three authority, and very much like that Warning Beacon, if you have played a Trade Federation card this turn, it can go straight into your hand. So you have five trade, buy this card, put it down, you get three more to buy another card, hopefully, or a base out of it as well. Gives you some more attack and a little bit of health. The Heavy Cruiser of the Star Empire, four attack, and if you've got more than one Star Empire card in play, you get to draw up two by itself. It just lets you draw one card into the fray. The Met Cruiser, more attacking units from the Machine Cult, six attack for a five cost card. This is a pretty good one. It lets you scrap a card in the hand or discard pile, and its ally ability, destroy target base. Pretty good uh, destroy target base ability, even for a low one, and you get to keep the card, and that's, a, of course, a cost five unit. The Parasite, brought to us by the Blob, gives you six attack or acquire a card of cost six or less for free this is good if there's a base in play that you want to grab up real quick or you want to deal some heavy damage you can pick one or the other the ally ability of course lets you draw up that card your stealth tower this is the card i was alluding to when i was talking about the central station it's very much like the stealth needle but the stealth tower doesn't have to take on the attributes of another base in play. This happened to me when I was practicing earlier this morning. Until your turn ends, Stealth Tower becomes a copy of any base in play. Stealth Tower has that fa base's faction in addition to Machine Cult, so you can have two ally abilities spawning from this card and also all the benefits from those cards as well. So if you had both Central Stations and this Stealth Tower, you'd get six trade and 12 authority before you even got a chance to draw up any more cards. The Federation Shipyard, there are some great bases that cost a lot in Colony Wars, and I'll talk about the pros and cons of this in just a moment. To trade, ally ability, put the next ship or base you acquire this turn on top of your deck. So let's say you buy up a nice base that you want to put in play, maybe hold back that card that lets you draw up you play that card, you draw your base, and you throw it right on into play. The Frontier Station brought to us by the Machine Cult. Two trade or three attack. Cost six and is an outpost of six. I should also mention the Federation Shipyard, also an outpost of cost six. This one's pretty good depending on what you're going to be going for. Very multi-use card that comes into handy. I do like this one. Unfortunately, I don't get a chance to grab it up as often as I'd like. Moving on to the Peacekeeper from the Trade Federation. Costs you six, but gives you six attack and six authority every time it comes into play. Its ally ability lets you draw up a card as well. Let's say you're playing with Colony Wars and the base deck, and you get the Stealth Needle and the Peacekeeper. 12 attack, 12 authority, draw two, based on this one card. This is a really good card if you can get it in your games. The Plasma Vent by the Blob, this is a bypassable cost 5. Gives you 4 attack, and if you've played a Blob card this turn, it can go directly into your hand. You can scrap it to destroy a target base, and I'm not the biggest fan of this one, mainly because it doesn't give you a lot of other benefits. It gives you a little bit of attack, and you can get it directly into play if you have, let's say, a Cargo Pod or a Ravager, in your hand and you're able to buy it up but scrapping it to destroy the target base i'm not a huge fan of that ideal it is also a bypassable base 
meaning that the AI can just go around it, or your opponent can just go around it, even though it's going to be dealing 4 damage every turn and providing the ally ability for the blobs. The Supply Depot for the Star Empire, this one's pretty kick-ass. Discard up to 2 cards. Gain 2 trade or 2 attack for each card discarded this way. So if you want to discard a Scout and a Viper, you can get 4 trade, 4 attack, or two of each and when you activate this card it will give you that option in the game ally ability of course lets you draw up it's an outpost of defense five and it costs you six so i'll let you decide whether or not that's a card you want to pick up the imperial palace costs you seven if you want to go for it you draw a card and your target opponent discards a card ally ability has an attack of four the Outpost uh, Defense of 6 isn't the greatest, but I think it's about the highest you're going to see with an Outpost for the Star Empire. I do like this one if, of course, you can pick it up. The Loyal Colony. This is a great one you can get, especially when you're playing the AI in Chapters 9 and 10, because AIs usually ignore non-Outpost bases. Note this is a bypassable 6 defense in every turn, it essentially does the Colony Seed Ship ability. It costs you a little more, and it'll still provide that ally ability for other bases and other cards as they rotate through your deck. Now the Blob have two really powerful cards at the high end in Colony Wars. The first up is the Moonworm. It costs you 7, but gives you 8 attack and draw a card from this one. So you can deal a hefty amount of damage from this card alone. If you have another one, acquire a card, or another blob card I should say, acquire a, a card of cost two or less for free and put it into your hand. So you can pick up an explorer, a lancer, um, a swarmer easily, get that, put it in your hand and immediately de deploy that into the game. The Wrecker, a machine cult ship lets you scrap up to two cards in your hand or discard pile. Ally ability lets you draw up, and this one gives you six attack for seven trade. It was a card, I believe it's in the promo deck called the Ark, and does something very similar. It lets you scrap up to two cards in your hand or discard pile, but the Ark actually lets you redraw where the Wrecker does not. Moving on now to the cost 8 cards, the Emperor's Dreadnought. This is one of my personal favorite cards. Gives you 8 attack, draw a card, and target opponent discards a card. Those last three lines though are what make it one that can be really helpful for you or absolutely decimate you in a game. When you acquire this card, if you've played a Star Empire card this turn, you may put this card directly into your hand. You have a bunch of Star Empire cards out, you have enough to get it, you buy it, you can put it straight into play, draw another card out, your opponent also has to discard. So this card can really turn the tide in a game if, you've making, if you're making your opponent discard two or three, you can pick this one up, they gotta discard another card and you're gonna deal a heaping amount of damage to them. The Factory World, the Trade Federation base from Colony Wars, three trade, Put the next ship or base you acquire this turn into your hand. So this one can also be one of those cards that really turns the tide if you need it. Let's say you could afford the Ark or the or the Emperor's Dreadnought, and you didn't play any of any Star Empire cards. You buy the Emperor's Dreadnought, you immediately throw it out there. You're dealing another eight damage. This is a defense, an outpost with defense 6, so some of these higher cards that I've been talking about can still blow through this base by themselves. The Leviathan. This is the other blob card that is extremely powerful. 9 attack. Draw a card and you may destroy target base. Just from this one card. I'm not even talking about the ally ability, which is also great. Acquire a card of cost 3 or less for free and put it into your hand. That'll help you maybe connect up any of the other ally abilities you haven't activated this turn. But that is a really powerful card if you, of course, you can get it into your hand. Lastly, we have the Incinerator. This is a machine cult base, costs you 8 like everything else that I've been talking about the last couple minutes. 
outpost with defense of six. And you can scrap up to two cards in your hand or discard pile. The ally ability, now this doesn't apply for just the incinerator. If you're going heavy on machine cult, this card can really play to your benefit. Gain two attack for each card scrapped from your hand or discard pile this turn. I was doing a practice game this morning, played the, had the incinerator, scrapped two cards, uh, scrapped two scouts, and then I played four other machine cult cards. I had those two, so it was four attack, plus another eight attack. I had 12 attack just from the incinerator. So if you have this card and if you play it right, you have a boatload of damage that you can deal for this. All right, I've talked quite a bit, and if you're joining us just now and you jumped ahead, we're now moving on to mission one of chapter nine. We're not talk we're not doing the mission 54, 55, 56 thing that we had in chapter eight. We're just going into mission one of chapter nine. The Morgana Nebula. Once it was avoided as a dangerous area of space. Probes and sensors could not penetrate it, and ships always gave it a wide berth. Until now. Reports from ships that have entered the nebula tell of a vast star system hidden within. The Morgana system appears to be rich with resources and has been largely untouched. You are CEO Chris Shaner. Your company has struggled to gain a foothold in the Trade Senate, and this could be the lucky break you need to obtain power in the Trade Federation. It has been far too long since your last taste of success. You order your fleet to the Morgana system. However, the electrical interference of the nebula damages many of your systems, and you must stop for repairs. Of course, showing any sign of weakness in space makes you a target. Your damaged fleet must defend itself against a small band of privateers eager for an easy kill. Okay, so the achievements for this mission. Note, we're starting off with 35 authority. Pirates are going to be starting off with 50. Win the game with 50 60 or 75 or more authority special rules for this one at the end of each of your turns both sides will gain two authority so we're going to start fighting a little bit of an uphill battle as we go into this mission i'm not going to resume it because i was just checking something before i started the recording all right and you're seeing all those colony more ships coming into play none of which i can afford Starting off with a base deck of eight scouts and two vipers, the pirates are starting off with seven scouts, with their eight scouts, a viper, and the battle bot that I talked about a little bit earlier on. Now, I could afford the colony siege ship here, but I want to start doing damage. And he hasn't picked up a, land, a base yet, so I'm going to avoid that for now. That was a calculated mistake. I'm going to grab the Stellar Reef because they like to ignore it. Solar Skiff, a little bit of trade, and Patrol Cutter looks pretty good. Okay, I'm immediately regretting a lot of the decisions I've been making here. I could go for the Falcon, but I need the Lancer because he's been buying bases now. And note, this is a 6 defense base. If I get the Lancer out, even by itself, I'm going to be able to take that base offline on its own. Could have gone for an orbital platform here, and I'm probably going to double back for it now. Okay. Six. Don't have enough for the Leviathan. I'm going to go for the Ravager. I'm going to grab the orbital platform. Next turn, though, now I can do some damage. Ooh, this is going to hurt. All right. What can I do here? Only six attack, not a lot, so I'll go for the Frontier Ferry. I need to try to get my health up. And I've only lost eight authority, so... Well, just seven? Alright, we'll draw a card, get some extra attack here. I'm going to discard my Viper. 
Another six attacks. Central Station's available for me, so I'm going to grab it. Take his orbital platform out so he can't do any damage with it. Okay. Only six. I'm going to take out the Bioformer. I'm going to cancel that. Grab the gunship. Ooh. Warning beacon. Take that. I'm actually going to scrap the Leviathan because I don't want the pirates to get that. If they get that, it's game over for me. Although it's pretty much game over for me at this point. I can't get any foothold of it. I can't get a semblance of a foothold here. I'll take that. Grab this guy, because I'm going to get some authority out of him. Another Lancer sounds good. Do some more damage. Not doing as great as I'd hope I would here to start off. And he's got the... Wow, he picked up the Incinerator, too. And I'm dead. Great. All right, let's try this again. All right, so the factory world, the Peacekeeper's already out. And I don't have anything I can do to actually afford this thing. The Warning Beacon would be a great first turn buy, but I need trade right now. And there he goes, putting it into play. He got a lot of attack, actually, on that one alone. Go for the Mining Mech. That'll give me some extra buying ability. Oh, this is not looking good, folks. Like, just early start, I'm doing really bad right now. This is awful. I'm really regretting this. At least I can get the Peacekeeper. He'll give me some extra authority. I need to get that central station when he comes back around. Really? I can't do any... I can't even, even with that one card. It's worthless for me to actually try to do anything. So I've just got to hunker down. Here we go. I can destroy some bases now. Let's grab another card in the hand or discard pile. Destroy target base. Still shy of the factor world. So I'm going to go for the frontier station. Got a 21. And now he's got both those stations in play. And that's just a really smug thing I'm looking at right now. I'm going to take one of them out. Because if you add, just adds one more base. And then he had the ability to uh, do a hefty amount of damage to me. Grab one of these guys. It's going to give me some extra attack. Five, six, seven. I'm still short. I just, I'm, no matter how I'm playing this, I'm just shy of getting exactly what I need. Don't have any of those cards. Of course, now one of them comes out. I'm going to go for two... I need the attacking more than anything else. Okay. Six attack. He has it exactly enough to take me down. Alright. Now that I've got a uh, log card in play, a little academic to do it now. I'll be getting some authority every turn, but there's that authority I was talking about. It's going to start playing to his advantage. I really think I'm starting to make a mistake by scrapping all these scouts. And I have to take out his bases. We have the patrol cutter and the trade hauler. This guy's still going to be in play. We got nine authority coming to me. Just don't die. I got it, but look how look how close to death I am. Maybe not as close to death as I think. I'm um Oh this I'm dead. Damn. Alright, let's give it another shot. Alright, going for the storage silo. The central stations, oh, the stealth tower going to get scooped up. Stealth tower is gone. I'll go for the station. That's going to give me that trade. Ooh, and a solar skiff. That's helpful. So I've got two trade federation bases and 
a Trade Federation card on my first playthrough on the deck. Actually, I'm gonna go for the. I'm gonna go for the command center, and hope I can get the Lancer or the orbital platform next. Watch the AI grab both of them. It's like I know. All right. Grab the heavy cruiser. I'll grab the Ravager and the Predator. Don't have any attack right now, so that's something I gotta rectify in subsequent turns. I'm gonna discard a scout because my Viper is actually needed to deal a little bit of damage. Oh, I have enough for the Leviathan, so I'll grab him right now. Take out his base. No more copying. He's got six attack just from that right there. That's not good. And now I got that plus ability with him coming on board. The plasma vent is available to me. Give me four attack every turn. I'm gonna actually gonna grab that one. I'm gonna scrap the colony and the frontier fairy. Both are good pickups. And remember, the objectives for this game, since it's been so long since we've actually looked at them, 50, 60, and 75 authority is what I need to end with. Let's draw up again. I'm going to go for the incinerator. I'm going to go for the heavy-duty stuff this time, because why not? Scrap the ravagers so he can't get it. I think I need to start going for some... Trade Federation cards here. <laughs> Alright. Map him. Destroy target base with a Leviathan. Draw up. And this will let me put any card three or less and put it into my hand. I'm gonna do this. Grab these two. Let's see if I can get a Trade Federation card for three. No. I'm gonna buy the gunship, though. Grab this guy. I know I've got lethal right now, but I'm gonna see if I'm gonna try one more turn and see if I can actually make it. I don't think it's gonna happen. That's helpful. Yeah, it's not going to happen this time, folks. Sorry. Of course, that card comes out when I least need it. Oh, we'll take the Lancer. We'll bring that in. Because that's going to let me draw up again. Eh. Scrappy, scrappy. Got one buying. Can't do anything with it. I'm not going to scrap this thing because I just bought it, of course, right at the end of the game. I'm not going to get any of the achievements, but... That is the first mission in Chapter 9 of the Star Realms campaign. It took a lot longer than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. I'm looking at the time of my recording. I'm somewhere around 33 minutes, and I will be putting a notation at the beginning of the video and in the description if you wanted to just talk about the deck itself or if you just wanted to jump to the fight portion of this mission. I am looking to start uh, putting more Xbox content on the channel. I do know that Republic of War, the total conversion mod for the game that started my channel, uh, Empire at War, I know Republic at War 1.2 finally launched. I'll be doing something with that in the coming weeks, but... For now, just expect a good mix of Star Realms and Xbox content over the next couple of weeks. Like, comment, and subscribe if you guys and gals and everyone in between are enjoying this series. Thank you all for watching, and I shall see you all later.